Greetings, magnificent souls to the Lily Buley podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is your host, Lily Buley, and I'm honored to have conversations here with thought leaders, visionaries, healers, and even solo conversations with myself about things I am currently reflecting on. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through our emotional trauma, allowing ourselves to be healthy, be happy, and live a peaceful life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses, we have to do things differently. We have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible, yet it's happening every single day. And it's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening the magnificent soul. We are all magnificent souls. And these are our stories of healing. Today in episode 97, I welcome Meredith Feynman to the show to talk about how to brag better and how to be fearless about self-promotion. This is a good one. And don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode or anything you would like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. Remember, it is a safe place and I would welcome the discussion. And also our request, if you are enjoying the show, please rate and share and review so we can get the word out y'all to more and more people and souls who want to heal. And on to the show today, my guest today, Meredith Feynman is a best-selling author, host, speaker, writer, and entrepreneur. Feynman is the author of Brag Better, which we'll talk about today, Master the Art of Fearless Self-Promotion. She's also a freelance writer of 17 years and has held columns and bylines and outlets from Harvard Business Review, Fast Company, Forbes, Inc., Elle, Shondaland, Cosmo, and more. I know you're going to enjoy this conversation here and this chat with Meredith Feynman. All right, Meredith, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm excited to talk today about bragging better, and we're going to get really deep into that, but thank you for coming on. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here on the internet with you. Yes, here we are connecting. Um, Ooh, I don't know where to start. Um, Cause there's, there's so much stuff like just going through my head on this side. I, like I mentioned every time when I have a great author on the show, I crushed your book, loved it. And it seemed like it was for, you know, high achieving women, um, in the workplace. And, um, I would love to, if you want, like, what is bragging better? Like, why is this important yeah, for us? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, I am the author of a book called Brag Better, Master the Art of Fearless Self-Promotion. I've spent 10 years crafting, executing, and applying a framework to teach to others on how to find your voice and share it strategically and cohesively to advance your career. Mm. My audience is called the qualified quiet, people that have done the work but don't know how to talk about it. Uh, The genesis of this book is also around my time running my company as a PR firm and being a freelance writer for 17 years and seeing how we pay attention and what breaks through with a message and how to carry that message forward, but also that we have it really ass backwards in who we listen to um, and who feels comfortable talking about their work. And so Mm. I advocate for that qualified quiet, which is irrespective of gender and irrespective of level of seniority on how to raise their voices. And I couch it under the word brag, which has a lot of feelings attached to it, but I define it as stating facts about your work strategically and cohesively to advance your career. Whether that is more money, whether that is an internship, whether that is a corporate board seat. Um, And so it's really for people that have done the work Um, and want to be able to share it in an environment that is very noisy and one that doesn't have role models, that doesn't have a vocabulary, which I wrote and put in place and doesn't have a framework for an activity that can be really scary and um, anxiety provoking. So Mm -hmm. um, I do boot camps around it. I have this book, I'm working on another um, and I speak and train all on how talking about yourself is an essential work skill. Ooh. 
Oh, this feels so good to me because I feel like one of the things that you mentioned that I connected with in the book was that it's for that person. And this is me 100%. It's for that, for that person that is like, oh, I'll just do the work and let it speak for itself. Yeah. So, so one of their many key messages in the book and in my work, but one of them is that your work will not speak for itself. And particularly, you know, we're doing this in Q1 of 2022, two years later, we're all still behind screens. Not only will your work not speak for itself in an office place where we're all on top of each other as it was in the before times, but now you particularly have to be extremely explicit with the work that you do and sharing it because there is no spontaneity. There is no someone walking by your desk and seeing something interesting you're working on. Uh, so you have to communicate it. My work is rooted in strategic communications and visibility and voice. Um, and you have to advocate for yours, uh, for you, but also so that other people can do the same. Mm. So powerful. That's so powerful. Um, and I had a question about the qualified quiet and it seems like that with that, within that intro, you kind of touched on that. Um, and I raised my hand, like I was a former member of that club. Thank God I'm out of it. So <laughs> thank you for putting context into what my experience has been. Um, but I do have a question. Why is talking about ourselves and like finding that voice and our com- accomplishments you mentioned at the beginning, it's excruciating. Um, why do you think that is? Yeah. So this is a newer skill set. It is a skill. It is a practice. If you have a gratitude practice, if you have any other kind of practice, this is something you learn and you practice, which is strategic self-promotion, talking positively about your work without an apology. It feels weird and wrong because I think in any previous time, particularly in the workplace, it was never about the individual at work. It was always about the greater whole. Mm. Now we have a very entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial economy where people have side hustles, where people have are promoting themselves and it's no longer seen as a bad thing within companies. So that's like on the grand work scale of where we are. Um, I will also say I promoted everything under the sun. I ran a PR firm for 10 years and what works is promoting a person and, and a, an individual um, and, you know, personifying a brand or a story. And so, so it is applicable for people, but you shouldn't know how to do these things. Not only is this like sort of a newer skill set that you have to have and that you can learn and that I teach and I've taught to thousands of people in trainings or in boot camps or just who've read the book. Um, but it is essential for moving the needle forward on your career because nobody knows what you've done until you tell them. Mm. But you don't have proper role models for this. What I fear and what happens is when you see someone, we all know someone who has done less than we have, but gets more attention. And we either think they're obnoxious or they don't know what they're doing, which they might not. But for some reason, you know, just how imposter syndrome strikes all the wrong people, it's the the people who have done less, who feel comfortable bragging about it. And so What I worry is that people see someone doing that and instead of figuring out a way to do it for yourself, which is what I teach in a way that feels true to you, in a way that's strategic, in a way that's authentic, in a way that is Mm. effective, instead you defer and say nothing. Um, and that's really dangerous. And that's where a lot of people are. So, so that's the first, you don't have role models for this. You don't have a lot of healthy role models. I grew in, I grew up in and around the media. I'm in and around the media and I see, you know, the louder getting the attention. And as much as I would like to say, we can get those louder people to be quiet. That's not going to happen. That's not how we pay attention. It's not what we give money to. It's not what we give airtime to. So you got to turn up that volume dial. You also, depending on your background, I talk about old stories that affect how you view visibility, maybe culturally, maybe how you were told to perform gender in a certain way. Maybe both your parents were data scientists. So the idea that you would talk about something without a hundred percent certainty and five, you know, um, studies that have all been peer reviewed, like is insane. Maybe you are not American and you come from a culture where this is very, um, very frowned upon. So all of that will also affect it. And then, you know, for women or anyone who's just sort of not a white man, like it's, it's also related to privilege and who we listen to and who gets our attention. Um, but particularly for women, positive attributes were historically associated with passive behaviors around voice. So she was shy, she was demure, she was coy. All of those meant you were super hot and you did not speak. 
Um, and so, you know, I tried to include a bunch of like old advertising and stuff in the book, which it, it didn't make sense, but um, where that was seen as deeply alluring. And, mm. and then also it's, it's, you're judged on metrics that men are not also anyone who's any kind of other is judged on metrics that a white man is not. And so that makes it really scary to want to be able to want to do these things anyway. Um, uh, you know, and particularly for women, how high is your voice? How tall are you? What color is your hair? How old are you? Um, you know, how do you dress? Um, and, and so all of that makes it a really difficult thing. However, it is a net positive and is something you need to learn to do. Um, and that you can learn to do and is a skill you develop to propel yourself. Mm. Y'all don't see me over here, but I'm shaking my head. I'm like, <laughs> oh girl, you are telling some, some truths here. And I love like your, the, and we'll talk, I think about this more too, but the clarity and the specific, specificity, specificity <laughs> with which you say this is like, it's so like it, it reaches, um, I'm a feeling person. So it reaches so many different, different parts that haven't been seen. So I appreciate well, that. Thank you. And I want to be really clear. The reason why I sound this good and cohesive is one, it's, it's what I do for a living, but also you have to practice it over and over again. I have done hundreds of podcasts at this point. I've done hundreds mm -hmm. of interviews. I've written about this topic. I wrote a book on the topic. I give speeches constantly. I host things constantly. You know, it sounds this airtight only because I've been practicing this message for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like I might be being more off the cuff, which like anyone who seems off the cuff, that takes a lot of time. Like I'm comfortable enough with the material that I can swap out a word here, play with a new phrase there um, because I know it so well, but it's, you know, that's where this is coming from too, is like my message now is this tight because I've said it a lot of times, said it wrong a lot of times, um, altered it a lot of times. So, so like, if you're listening to this and, and also I'm a media person, like this, is part of me practicing what I preach is it takes a lot of practice. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, and yeah. Oh gosh. So amazing on this side. So thank you for sharing all that. Um, what would you say, what are some kind of key points or key, um, guideposts in getting to, um, I know like time seems like a big one, right? Like there's a lot of, for me, it's been a lot of trial and error in my professional career. Um, but what would you say, like, are some key guideposts on getting to that clarity and that, that those, that just that feeling, I guess, of being able to, to speak up for yourself and brag better in your opinion? Yeah. So it, it's a practice. It's a skill it is much harder. Like, so you're, if you identify with the qualified quiet, if you're someone who has done the work, but don't know how to talk about it, um, that's okay. You're so not alone. It's what I do for a living. Um, and you're in a position of power. So it is much, much harder to put in the time and energy and work and degrees of mastering whatever it is you're mastering or working hard and doing a good job at your job than it is to figure out how to market yourself and your message and narrative around it. So it's slightly different from whatever you're doing, but it's it's what's scarier. And I've seen as a publicist in the reverse, when like a company or brand invests a lot in public relations and in, you know, sexy messaging and design, but hasn't done the work and effort to really back it up. So, so you're in a position of power, bragging, stating those facts strategically and cohesively to advance your work at any level, um, looks different for a lot of people. So, when I work with anyone, whether it's in a power hour one-on-one -on -one or, you know, if you're in my interactive boot camp, I'm going to want to know what you want and we're going to reverse engineer it. So bragging to you might look like simply being acknowledged for your ideas. It might look like being on a stage. It might look like starting a podcast. It might look like getting your first job. It might look like getting a raise. What is visibility and success with this look like to you? Because that's gonna really determine a lot of your activities. So let's say it's simply wanting to be acknowledged for your ideas, or at least feeling like your boss hears you. Okay, how often are you communicating to your boss your wins? Are you asking them how you can do that better? Are you asking them to encourage you to say those things? Are you asking your colleagues to encourage you to say those things? Are you offering to do it for other people? Bragging better is a team sport, which we can talk more about, mm. but you cannot and should not do this alone. Um, which is to say that if you've also learned these things as part of your job to pass the mic and share the mic and elevate the voices of other people as well. Um, but it can start as simple as 
you know, writing an email to someone on your team, you just want, you know, acknowledgement saying, Hey, you know, I want to make sure, and you can always blame it on me. You know, I'm working on this thing. I read this book. I really want to make sure that I'm communicating my work effectively. You know, do you think I'm doing that? Is there a way I can do that better? What is the best way for me to communicate my wins to you? Um, maybe it's simply that. Um, and, and asking others who are good at this, by the way, to help you. Like a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, this person at the office is so good at doing this. You know, I'll never be like, use them. And that sounds like so, I mean, half of it's, you know, it's, it's a strategic thing. If someone has a skill set that you do not leverage it. So, mm. you know, instead of trying to be in competition with them, it's sort of like, hey, you're really good at touting your work. I really admire how you do it. I'm working on it. I read this book and thinking about how I can be better at it. Like, would you be open to, you know, asking me a question in a meeting so that I look good or helping me, you know, with some of the stuff that makes me really nervous and you know, maybe there are ways I can help you and you couch it in, you know, admiration and praise, but also like that person feels good about themselves. And if someone's already good at this stuff, like they can help you do it too. It's like, not a, like I got to brag more than Bob, who's very good at it. It's like, okay, Bob, you're so good at this thing that is hard for me. You mm. know, I really admire it. Like, are you open to, you know, helping me? Are you open to, and you know, sometimes it gets very competitive, but th that's what I'm saying too, is like, you know, people look at people who are good at this stuff and say, well, I'm going to compete with them. But instead it's like, okay, you know, knowing what you're good at and knowing what you're not good at is also very powerful. And this is something you have to learn, but it's not something you have to perfect. I mean, I do because it's what I do. Um, but, but that's not what we're going for here. Mm. Wow. So I heard so many good nuggets in there. Um, I heard clarity on goal. So like what you're saying is like the reverse engineering part is like to understand, like, what is it that you really want in, in communication? Right. Um, I heard, um, being a team player, which I would love to kind of unpack a little bit. You um, gave me a little bit of a breadcrumb there and I'll take it. Um, but what do you mean by that? I'm curious. Yeah. So bragging better is a team sport. Um, a lot of times it can feel like there can only be one. We do this to anyone who's not a white man. There can only be one woman. There can only be one black person in this, you know, black leader mm. in this role. There can only be one Latinx leader in this role. And that, that is just, a fallacy, but also I will be very clear. This is playing in a broken system of like patriarchy and racism and sexism. So like, you know, it's, I'm not going to pretend like if you brag better, those systemic issues are going to go away. Like this is a broken system. Mm -hmm. So I'll make that very clear. However, if you're someone that people listen to, if you're white, if you're a man, if you're a white man, or if you're someone who's learned to brag better and you're not either of those things, it's part of your job to pay it forward to help bring up others at its most selfish. It just makes you look really charitable and good. Um, you know, it, it has been proven over and over again that more diverse voices and leadership just like leads to more money. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's always mystifying to me, but there are a lot of people that want to, you know, cling to power. Um, so that's just a different thing. Um, but that's one piece of it, but it's also you can ask other people to help you brag. You can brag on behalf of others. It's free and it's easy for me if I can't do a speaking gig to have a list of people because I know these conference organizers are not going to do that work of people who would not get that opportunity or people whose you know, speaking fees are lower than mine who would really like this opportunity. And then I can help someone else win also. And it's free mm. and it's easy and it makes me look good. And it makes me look good to the conference organizers because it looks like I know people. It's a I gave someone money who wanted it. That's a great thing too. Um, so it's just really important to pass that mic and share that mic. Um, and, and the truth is anytime that I've tried to compete versus collaborate, like just yes. doesn't work. Yes. Um, so it good. actually, it just like, it doesn't work, but, but in the bragging context, it's asking people to promote your work. And it's also doing the same. It is free and easy to share someone's article. They wrote to share their new boot camp. to, um, you know, and you can ask people how you everyone's on a different place in this and what they want and what they need. So you can say, how can I help share your work? Um, maybe it's as simple as, you know, I had someone despondent that like nobody cared about her work. Cause like there weren't enough comments on LinkedIn. I was like, okay, but like who would know to do that? And that's a metric you care about. So like ask people like, email 20 people say like, Hey, I'm trying to bulk up my LinkedIn. It would mean a lot if you wrote a comment, like I, and I went and wrote a comment, like, I didn't know that meant something to you. Um, so you also have to ask. Totally. Totally. I love that. And I, Oh, what you said too, is my, like my intention for this year is, um, 
collaboration over competition, 100%. So you just like hit something in me for sure. So thank you for that. And thank you for joining me here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I feel like the, the other kind of framework piece is what you just said is recruit support. Um, which you just said, but that's something that I picked up too, when you're talking about kind of this, these steps that you would go through and doing that. Um, do we miss anything as far as, um, that funnel down to bragging better? I don't know if there's anything. Yeah. I mean, so there's a lot of different pieces to it. So totally. let's just do, so the, the, the pillars of bragging better yeah. are proud, loud, and strategic. Those are the mm. three pillars. There's now a fourth, which I'll get into in a second. So proud is to be proud of your work, which I think is the hardest part, but like, are, do you have, how often are you recording your wins? Do you know how to spot a win? Um, do you have a Google document, an iPhone note, a piece of paper where once a week, five, 10 minutes, you just write down like three to five things you did this week that you're proud of. They can be big or small. doesn't really matter. Uh, do you have that practice set up? You know, we have lots of different practices about gratitude or appreciation. And this is one where, again, it's this muscle you, you learn and train, um, to be able to spot these things. And it is not the like highest level, sexiest thing that is the best brag. It's whatever you are most passionate about. And it's whatever like you are most proud of, because what makes people want to be close to you and champion you is your excitement. So if you're just like, oh yeah, I got this award, blah, blah, blah. But I led this project, uh, you know, and this, you know, one of the things in my free time, I do this like, you know, river cleanup. What are you going to remember? I'm going to remember the latter, not the former. So Um, that's the proud piece loud. Uh, my background is in strategic communications. What breaks through with a message in this case, the message is your career and your work is two things. Repetition. How often are you hearing something and consistency? Each time you hear it, how similar is it in order for people to remember things? They have to hear it and hear it similarly many times. So how often are you reiterating Oh, you know, in this cleanup that I did this week, I did X and Y and Z. Oh, you should come join what, you know, so over and over again. And then um, strategic is, is it getting to the right people? Like if your brag goal is actually not at work and it's, hey, I want to be the president of the local river fund cleanup. Again, I'm just making this up. Then like, who needs to hear about these things? Who's in charge of those? Who are the gatekeepers to getting you to the next level? And like, where are you going to put that stuff? There's a fourth pillar. So my book came out in June of 2020. Um, I wrote a chapter on how to brag better from home and online, which needs to go back up on my website, meredithfeynman.com, that I quickly wrote. Um, So I have a lot to say and will continue to do a lot of work and writing for the next bit about what this means to be doing behind screens because Mm. there was a lot of that, but a lot of things have changed. Um, And a lot of these core competencies are the same. However, um, the fourth pillar is explicit. We don't have time for you to like pussyfoot around with like whether or not you're going to talk about your work. Talk about it or don't. Um, Everyone's in an emergency. We've been there for two years. You don't know what, I mean, this highlighted something that's really important that you don't know what's going on with people. Maybe they've lost childcare. They lost relatives due to COVID. They're sick. They are afraid because their spouse lost their job. They, you know, like there's so much going on that like, I'm sorry, it's hard for you to talk about yourself, but if that person, your boss has five minutes or, you know, the hiring committee has this second, like you have to maximize that and be explicit and direct because we're all behind screens. Also, there's no inferring, there's no body language. You can only see people from the chest up. I can't make certain expressions. I can't use my body in that way. I can't use humor in that way because it's also not a really funny time. Um, so, so that's really, really important to keep in mind is like, this is also a necessary skill set that is part of your job. And part of the reason why you were hired is also the communication of your ideas. Mm. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you. So, oh, so much stuff. Um, so yeah, it's, a lot, I, it's a lot of, you know, I have a lot, I have a so lot good. to say. Yeah. Dropping bombs over here in like 20 minutes. Um, so, um, like some things that stuck out for me, um, when I was reading was the specificity piece. And this is something that has been very up for me, um, in my development and also in like the way that I present myself professionally in my business. Um, and I'll read it and I'll say a quote specific specificity is key in helping someone latch on to you and your message. Um, 
have we already discussed that first of all, and go ahead. No, I mean, people latch on to, and this is true, like in all of my career of strategic communication and being a writer and being a speaker and being a host and all those things is like people latch on to stories and specificity. So if I say, oh yeah, I wrote a book um, on bragging that came out, or I say, you know, I spent 10 years building a framework for strategic self-promotion that I poured into this brag, into this book called Brag Better, came out during the pandemic, and it has done very well, which I'm really proud of. And what I'm particularly proud of is that it contains, you know, almost two dozen interviews with really diverse, interesting voices talking about how they came to think of themselves and their work and how they communicate it. Um, you know, you should you should buy it wherever books are sold. Um, you know, one is a lot more effective than other than the other. And mm-hmm. yeah, the more specific you can get, the more concrete you can get, you will latch on to um stories, not ideas. Um, so you know, I think that that being highly specific is important um because it'll help people latch on in in my speeches, well, when, in the before times when they were mostly. Uh, in person. Now all I do is speak from my house, which I actually kind of like, and I will have to go back to stages soon, but I do an introduction exercise where I have people pair up and introduce themselves. And you're tempted to lead with which your introduction is a great place to brag. It is a classic place to brag. You got to practice it over and over again. That's Mm. fine. Um, But I have people introduce themselves. I don't tell them anything. And I have, you know, people lead with the laundry list and it's boring and it's nobody latches onto anything or feels anything. And then I tell them to do it again, but lead with something in your work um, that you are really proud of that you've done recently. Um, And that changes the game. The energy shifts. It's like what someone cares about, not what they think someone wants to hear. Mm. You could just go, go insane trying to guess what people want to hear. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's what I would say about the specificity of it all. Totally. That's a hundred percent true. I feel like in every context, I feel, we'll, which we'll kind of, um, close out with two at the end. Um, yeah. And I think like knowing yourself, knowing there's just this whole, like, like, I feel like blossoming period of like knowing like what you do bring to the table, but then practicing what you're talking about, which is your skill set of like, okay, well, how can I make this, this concise, like elevator pitch, I guess, for lack of a better term and say like, um, yeah, like what, what's your value and say, oh, it's dope. That's so good. Thank you. It's so good. I Um, worked real hard on it. So thank you. Yeah. I would say like, like what, like what, 10, 15 years took you there and it (sighs) happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It sounds, I will say it sounds like a very clear path. It was not. So that's a different podcast. That's a different podcast. But people were like, oh, you just came up with this thing. And then I was like, no, no, it was a lot uglier than that. But, um, but yes, yeah, so, so, um, but same. I'm and I think like what, yeah, when, what I always tell people like, and what I do is like, whether we can see it at the time or not, there is a better way. Like there's a way that you could, there are things that you can learn that like, you're talking about skill sets. I love to talk about skill sets too. It's like, yeah, it, you don't have to like crouch in the corner and not be recognized, but there are ways that you can kind of you know, in, in the context of what you do, it seems like, like practice those flexing, like do the muscle work, like do all that stuff. Well, and what I, you know, there's a lot in the book about this and a lot of things I've written about. And if you join, I have a boot camp starting February 1st that your employer should pay for, <laughs> uh, which I'll leave all the info you'll get. Um, but you know, it, this is, it's something you got to practice. It's something you can learn. Um, I don't want to, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's only hard because it's like a different muscle. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a different muscle and that's okay. Um, what I'll say is, you know, you can start wherever you are. Um, and it doesn't matter where you are. Everyone has something to brag about. So I don't care if you're in college or you are a CEO Um, you can start anywhere. What I don't want is for you to see someone doing this in a way you don't like, and think you can't figure out a way to do it. That suits you for yourself. That's the biggest, that's the biggest danger here. You can do it in a way that, I mean, I think authenticity is a trap, which is a whole different conversation, but you can do it in a way that feels okay to you. It's still going to be scary, but, um, if you don't do it, you're losing money, you're losing job titles, you're losing jobs, you're losing um, opportunities. 
Um, so, so that's also what's at stake. Hundred. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yes. Um, one other thing, which is who would you say that this book is for? Um, I know you kind of mentioned at the beginning, but I just want to kind of make it very clear. Um, and just, I don't know, give you the opportunity to do that too. Cause we haven't really yeah. specifically well, if about you, that. Yeah. If you feel like you've done a lot of work and you're not getting recognized for it, if you feel like you're stalling in your career, if the word brag makes you want to throw up and run in the other direction, <laughs> um, you know, so if, good. if you know that you have terrible trouble talking about yourself, which most people do. Um, if you feel like you're not being heard, if you feel like you're not being recognized, um, if you, uh, want more money or more praise or more visibility or more press, um, you know, it comes from my background is in public relations. So it's this idea that this, the skill set of a publicist being able to control the narrative of your work, tell a compelling story and get what you want out of someone without exchanging any money, um, and writing a pitch and, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, being resourceful that that was tremendously useful for any professional. Um, and I would say also that it's not just my voice, um, that there are two dozen interviews of, you know, um, people that don't look like me from a gender expression or privilege or race standpoint, um, that's really important. And, uh, so it's, it's also a very deeply tactical book. I'm not here to tell you what to feel. I'm here to tell you what to do. So this book is, um, a roadmap. Uh, it's not like a touchy feely, empowerment situation. I think people are empowered by, by doing concrete things. So, mm. um, it's definitely, uh, that kind of book. Yeah. A hundred percent. And so many people, even if like, even if, like you say, even if you do have like a side hustle, you still need like, and it's something that you want to grow or you have a, like a purpose filled, something, then you have to talk about yourself in order to get it out there. And but also like nobody I knows. Do. So exactly. Like, they, can't, they can't know. And you have to be the, you want to be the one leading the charge because like, who doesn't want to get behind someone who's leading their own charge too. You have to make it easy for people also to promote your work and to tell mm -hmm. people what you do. Like if you're not talking to people to say about your side hustle, how is someone who loves you very much going to, going to help you like with that? They can't. And they want you to win. They want you to get money. They want your side hustle to continue, but they don't know how you're talking about it. So how are they supposed to talk about it? Like mm -hmm. they don't know what to say because you're not telling them what to say because you're not saying anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you have to help people along with that as well. Yeah. So true. And I love like what you're saying, like y'all, it is like a framework. Um, Meredith puts so much um, like practical exercises. Like it really kind of feels like that I have uh, like a PR person like her of her caliber in my pocket. And it does it like the application again, like she's saying could be for anything that you're doing any, any like dream that you have or whatever. So I love it. It's dope. Thank you. My thank pleasure. you. Thank you. But my that's, pleasure. that's the idea here is like how to be your own publicist. And also everything I've learned from being a very high level publicist, um, was actually really great for, I mean, you know, learning how you can do that for yourself. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, so I want to shift a little bit and we talked about this at the beginning. So we're just kind of going to see how it flows and, and go from there, but I'm wondering, so I talk a lot about, um, love and relationships. And I, when I was reading the book, I, I saw so much kind of through put like through put energy on the efficacy of the philosophy, I guess, that you're teaching and, um, putting it in the context of, like dating or love and relationships. Do you see a parallel in there? And if you do, do you feel comfortable kind of seeing what that would be from your perspective? Yes. I'm very careful to say that the framework that I've built and the work that I do is for the professional world. Um, I do think showing up for yourself in general is important. I've always been hesitant to get into the personal applications of bragging better because I feel like I'm not really here to tell anyone how to live their lives. Um, way back when though, I did, you know, originally become known on the internet, uh, as a dating blogger. Um, so I wrote a viral blog in like the, in like 2009, 2010 called 51st J dates, which 
allowed me to test a oh, lot of wow. things in public. No yeah, idea. yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't, I don't advertise it, but, um, it is how I got my break into an online voice. It's how I learned to write every day. It's how I got into the early blogosphere and early influencer work and all of that stuff. So I don't, no regrets there. Um, you know, I am by no means a dating expert at all. Um, I do think though, that the showing up for yourself and being proud of yourself um, in any kind of personal context is important and it's hard. I mean, mm-hmm. I definitely like, again, I'm comfortable doing all of this stuff and giving all this advice and doing all these frameworks and work in a professional context. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert in, in how to live your life. I think that though in, in the dating realm, like showing up for yourself and, and, and being true to yourself and your voice is something that, um, is intrinsically part of who I am, um, is, is what I would say, but I'm curious to hear from you, Mm. you know, as someone who is in this space, like, where do you see potential applications? Oh, yeah. Thank you for asking that. Um, I mean, a couple things for me came up, like, for me and my, like, if I had to put on my old qualified quiet hat and I'm on a date, um, I would ask a lot, like, I'm really great at asking questions, hence this format, right? Like I'm really good at, um, eliciting conversation from someone else. I would say back in the day when I would go on a date, I would probably talk like 20% of the time, to be honest. Right. And, you know, there's a lot there, there's a lot there on like, is that the right person or, you know, all that Mm -hmm. stuff there. But in general, I would say that, um, I would be more of the qualified quiet on a date. Right. And so that's where I like, I guess that's where I'm kind of like realizing that, And what I teach now is like your value is important, right? Like what exactly what you're saying, which is like, um, be okay talking about who you are, what you want, what you want, right? And again, I see that as as what you're talking about, which is a clarity on a goal, (laughs) right? And yeah, so I mean, that's like the start. There's a lot there, I feel like, but go ahead. No, I'm curious. I mean, I don't shut the fuck up. So like it's, it's a... That's like not my issue at all. I do not <laughs> shut the fuck up. Um, so like, again, like that's why I wrote this book. Uh, I never had any issues with it, with talking about myself or like, you know, um, but I hope that, yeah, I mean, it encourages everyone to speak up about what they, who they are and what they've done in any context, you know, and, and advocating for yourself in any context. I think that actually that's, that's really key is, you know, advocating for yourself and your work or your worth or who mm-hmm. you are. It's just, ad, you know, self-advocacy yeah. is, is really what the core of this work is. Yeah. And if you go through those three tenets that you said, which is proud, loud, and strategic, like, how do you, like, how do you feel on dates? Like, do you feel like your self-worth or worthy of 50% of the time of, of the conversation? Um, are you loud and saying, um, you know, I've had to do this in my development when I'm, when I'm like trying to speak up for myself just in general, like with boundaries and relationships is that like, Hey, no, like this is my pole in the ground and I'm going to stay here and and I'm going to protect this. Right. Or, and then strategic is like, Oh, maybe are you with the right people? Like, are you going on the right dates with the right people? You know, I don't know. That's kind of like, if I get really deep and juicy into it, that's where I kind of pull it out. So that's dope. Well, I love that it has applications in your work. I mean, I've heard from a lot of people that they do find, you know, once they start to engage in these activities and feel, learn to advocate for themselves um, and tell their own story that it, that it does help them in other areas of their life, whether it's, you know, leading the charge in an apartment co-op or being able to, um, you know, something, you know, things at home, like negotiate with a contractor or, um, you know, figure out, you know, how to brag for their friends. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely that through line. I'm mostly here to help you get what you want professionally, but it is cool to see how other people interpret it because, you know, that's what happens when you write a book, you, you leave it open to interpretation for a lot of other people. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Um, well, as we close out here, um, you mentioned a few things going on for you right now. Obviously, y'all go get the book. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the show notes, and I'm sure it can be found everywhere, right? Yes, everywhere you get books. Um, also, books are expensive. I would love for you to buy one, but 
two free things. You can review it on Amazon or Goodreads and you can get it from your local library. There's also the audiobook format. So you can hear me talk it at you for seven hours. <laughs> Wonderful. And what was the thing that you have coming out on February 1st? Yes. So other ways to work with me. Um, uh, you can hire me to speak or train. Um, all this is on MeredithFeynman.com. You can join a Brag Better boot camp, which is four weeks long. It's self-guided video modules and worksheets and then live Q&A sessions. Um, and you get lots of friends and worksheets and checklists and time with me and um, spending enough time together, but not so much time together that it's, you know, it's efficient and it is helping you find your voice and what to do with it and what you want out of it. Um, there is a new cohort of the Brag Better Bootcamp that starts February 1st. I do them for what I call individuals, which is anyone can sign up. That's February 1st. And then I also do them for companies. So your company can purchase this for a group of employees. Mm. Um, if you are not self-employed, you should not be paying for this. Professional development budgets cover it. And I have yet to see someone who's not self-employed who hasn't gotten at least 75% coverage. Um, so that starts February 1st to March 1st. Um, and yes, then buy the book. And you can always um, do a power hour with me, which is like an hour of my time strategizing around your career. I do them about the book world. I do them about annual reviews. I do them mm. about salary negotiations. Um, so yeah, that's, those are all, all the different ways to, to find me and work with me. Mm. Well, thank you for your work and thank you for your time today. I just, I could go on, I feel like for hours, but I really appreciate it. Well, you. as I said, I don't shut the fuck up. So I could yeah. also go on for hours, <laughs> um, but, but uh, in the interest of time, yeah. um, but, but no, thank you for, thank you for having me. And um, I'm excited to keep this conversation going. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, y'all, how much did you love this episode with Meredith Feynman? It's like she was seeing a part of me um, when I used to be in the corporate world, but I see it's she like put words to things that I felt not only in like life and corporate, but also about things about relationships too. And, um, you know, super powerful when we can start to talk about ourselves in a very valuable way, right? This is a skill. So if you're feeling down about how far you've come or where you are, just remember that it's a skill, y'all. We got you. You're not alone. Uh, also, in closing, don't forget this announcement, um, a reminder that on February 3rd, I am hosting a free training to help you find magnetic, epic, love and date without the BS. So I'll be guiding you through the exact system that I have used to make dating effortless, fun, and enjoyable. I know crazy, right? This is for men and women. Check the link in the show notes to register. Spaces are limited. They are, they have been being grabbed up and I so look forward to seeing you there. And thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time y'all.